Well, let me tell you what happened. They, uh, I ordered the iced coffee and uh, I see the hot cup come out on the other end. So immediately, you know what I think I'm thinking. Oh, they, they screwed up the order, right? I got to now I got to go through telling them, oh, no, I said iced. The guy's going to read it like it's, a, it's some kind of legal dispute. I pick it up. I don't know why I felt compelled to pick it up. I heard the ice shake. But in the hot cup. Well, this fucked me up. It turns out they must have ran out of plastic cups, but I, it looks hot. It's got a different feel. I have to sip it through the hot lid. It was actually a very complicated situation. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to be looking at this month's RoboPack feature, uh, which is actually patch groups. And I want to, instead of talking about setting anything up, I want to give you a little perspective into kind of day in the life. Like now that you know you have patch groups set up, what is this going to look like to manage uh, the successful deployments, how you can monitor it. So, you know, kind of more of a real world look at using it. I mean, I, you know, I had to get on the flight, so I couldn't leave the airport, but I mean, I certainly was considering it. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. All right. So what I want to talk to you about today are the uh, kind of the patch groups in uh, the RoboPack app. Uh, the Patch groups are, well, let's review what they are, right? The idea of a patch group, I'm going to go ahead and add one. Essentially, it's a deployment model that you can assign a large group of apps to and the way they will work. So, for example, if I have, you know, developer apps, I'll give a little description apps that my develop developer can't spell. Shut up developer team uses. Um, I could set default language. Uh, I could determine what kind of script template is used. I'll leave it on the default. Um, and then kind of the rules for the app once it goes to Intune, right? Um, don't supersede, automatically start and update new deployments. Um, you know, uh, allow uh, uninstallation from the company portal, just basic settings. And then how many previous versions I wanna keep, maybe just two superseded versions. Um, and then what you do is you set up the way that app gets deployed in a deployment wave. So any app in here is assigned to the groups in your tenant. So if I pick one of my tenants, uh, create groups for new wave. Uh, existing group. So in my Rubik's dev tenant, I could, let's say, do all my devices if I wanted to. I could do my, one of my win groups. Maybe I could do the cloud PCs. Uh, do I still have the cloud PCs? I do. Win 365 cloud PCs. Okay. Oh, or just win cloud. You could do multiple groups. So you can have uh, this wave go out to multiple different entry groups. Uh, and once that's there, you can edit attributes about it. So for example, I'm gonna scroll down here, remove assignment on completion, meaning do I want this app to get deployed, you know, just once and then remove the assignment or, you know, just leave it on. Um, any kind of delay, any kind of limit on the wave, meaning that after three days, consider it closed. So it's almost like a, a an update ring, but for applications, which I find very interesting. Um, response rate and install success rate. And this I'm gonna show you in a minute. So in order, the idea here is that a wave, once it's complete, will automatically move to a new wave. So for example, maybe I'm testing a bunch of apps on a cloud PC. And then what I wanna do at that point is deploy it to all devices. So in this wave, right? I might expect a larger success rate. I might expect 90%, right? So the idea here is I have a group of apps and I can name the waves. So I have my cloud pilot wave one, and then I have my broad deployment wave. Oh, they, they already named them. So I don't have to, okay. Actually, I could take out the wave one here we don't have to be redundant okay so you can see that they're a little more customized now um cool once they are set i can save that patch group now there's no apps associated with it right so i can add some apps to the group 
and then that will determine how they're rolled out. So for example, I could do two things. I can add instant apps, which Robopack is great for, right? Could literally be anything. So if I wanted to do Sublime Text, um, that's gonna go right into that patch group, right? Okay, so I'm gonna hit Create Flow. We're gonna add another one. Let's add Visual Studio. Uh, let's do Visual Studio Enterprise, okay? And it tells us there's existing apps there, so we're just gonna throw that in there. And let's do another one. Uh, we can do, do they have PyCharm? Uh, cool, PyCharm Community Edition. Cool. So these are my developer apps. So now you can see I have three different developer apps that I'm gonna test on the cloud PC and then broad deployment. Um, so let's go ahead. And now the other thing you can do is you can, remember we talked about Radar last month. So you can import with Radar. Um, so you can scan your tenant. Right, and then from there, you can add additional apps into your patch group, but we already talked about that. It's just another nice thing you can do. They don't have to necessarily come from uh, RoboPack. So let's go back to the patch groups, developer apps. Those are our apps. And if we hit start deployment, right, that'll basically deploy that for us. You know, so many times when we, I guess, the Intune content creation people, us who do the videos, right? We tend to show how to set things up. But I think what's more important sometimes, and one thing I wanna try to do more, show you how things just look day to day, right? What does that look like going forward? Uh, what does it look like if I just wanna monitor it? What does it look like after it's been deployed for a while, right? There's so many you know, times just the way these things are where I'll build something and try to show you guys and, you know, I can only show you hopefully in the immediate how it runs and, you know, maybe we, we uh, revisit it. But I want to show you uh, a patch group that's been out there doing its thing for a little while and just how valuable that is to look at the monitoring of it. All right. So I'm going to go to all my patch groups and I have this patch group zero I made. I think I made this when we were looking at radar. Um, so I have actually quite a bit in it. I have Teams, I have Docker. Now, these are all set up with the same wave, right? It's just going to my WinCorp group and I'm looking for 75% success. Um, but each one I can report on. So if we look here, right, let's start with Docker Desktop. So with Docker Desktop, it already got deployed and we can see that automatically a new version superseded the old one. So let's look at that active wave and see how it did. Okay, so wave one was completed, but what does that mean? Well, we can look at the live status of it. So Docker Desktop was deployed to uh, one, two, you know, this many PCs. Uh, we can see the users. So it looks like this might've been one PC. Um, yep, and we can see it went through its update. Okay. Right. Um, cool, 2260, yep, we can see when it got updated. Um, we can see that Rick Jones machine got it, uh, success count to pending count. And then if you have different tenants receiving it, you can see the breakdown by tenant, which is cool. So that's really good. Right. And this will continue that way. When I go back and let's look at a different app. So teams, for example, has been through, you know, three updates. So when I first deployed it on, uh, in February, you know, we were at this version of it. Uh, 25017. And if I want to kind of look into there, I can peek. It's probably not going to show me information because it's been deactivated. But if we go back to the active version, same thing. We could see the wave was complete and we should be able to see the live data of it. Yep, absolutely we can. Updated yesterday. So it's really cool that, and then at a glance, right, you can look at all your apps and see how many revisions they've been through. So I could see, okay, Oracle, that, and you can see the percentage too, right? Hit 100%, hit 100%. So really good stuff in terms of, uh, you know, just coming in here and looking at what you have, right? Um, if you go to your recent packages, you, know, you can look at this individually. So if we look at Docker Desktop, you can just get to the flow from there. But I think what's really nice about the patch groups is you don't have to assign individual apps anymore. And this is really important when it comes to personas, right? So we can build personas and then build the way they are deployed, right? So when we come in here and now I have my developer persona, okay? Um, we can see we have certain apps, right? 
Um, actually, let me fire them off. They do not look like they are. Here, let's start the deployments. See, now they're all gonna get deployed. There's a lot of products now that are available that sit on top of Intune, uh, kind of like this. Some focus on patching, some uh, focus on like remote management capabilities, some more security. And then uh, honestly, then there's some that do everything, right? But, you know, what I try to do is not do anything in like a shootout race. I, I don't believe there's a better product or a best product. I think organizations are different. You have to find what works for you. So when we talk about RoboPack, you know, I like these unique things, the patch flows, the patch groups. I find these very helpful in, uh, you know, just day-to-day -day management and kind of taking that burden of, you know, constantly assigning new apps to different groups, figuring out how to test, and also starting to manage your personas. So I think this would be really valuable. So if you haven't check, checked it out yet, you know, definitely do it. It's another great feature in here. And we'll be seeing you.